Hello. Um, this is a real actress, um, Anna Magnani. I'm a big fan of hers. But, and this is Furuk Amarshai. She doesn't exist. I made her totally from scratch. And I'll uh, quickly take a walk through how I make a character like this. Um, of course, you need a lot of reference files. So since she is Iranian, you need to study Iranian faces and uh, look at the features they have in common. And then later on, I'm going to give her an expression on her face. Where are you? And I need some uh, contemporary actresses. These two are two French actresses that I like to give her the right hairdo and the right kind of feel and expression so that she's a real person. So um, I'm a visual artist, so as an artist you always cheat. And I used to uh, build a model from scratch, but I didn't like that because the scan models are totally anatomically correct. So when you start from a scan model, this one, this model I bought uh, on a site called uh, 3D Scan. It's an English site with very good uh, models. It's not symmetrical. Uh, and what I do is I use another model, which is ready-made for me. This time I'll show it with uh, Cinema 4D model, and I re retopologize parts of this model over that uh, other model. What I do is, for instance, when I'm on this woman, I take a bit of her uh, polygon mode. I'm not on her, though. I'm on the arm. Here she is. So I select uh, the arm, for instance, and I split it away from uh, the arm uh, that you see here. And that arm, I will uh, lay over that woman so that it will fit. And uh, let me take away her. So here you have the arm, and here you have the woman. And what I do is uh, I use the HP modeling bundle, which has uh, a retopology uh, set tool set, which I cannot find right now. Uh, let me see. So I'll go to another um, interface for a while. So. Here, I use the retopology uh, tool set for that uh, arm. Um, come on. And it won't click on her. I'm so nervous. So here I put the arm already exactly over the, uh, the model. Then I select a woman, and I say, and I say, retopologize. Is it symmetrical? Absolutely not. And there you have the arm already projected onto the mesh. And by, if you don't really like it still, you can also refine it and smooth it. And what the HP modeling bundle does is it makes a shrink wrap around the arm. And it also puts it on polygon mode, polygon snap mode, so that you can also uh, model on it. So it puts this. And you go into uh, the, uh, the grab. You can use the grab, for instance, to refine it 
or you can go on with your retopology by using the pen. And uh, I never do this, but you could, because I do this all in parts. So what you could also do is, for instance, uh, what I always do is take different models and overlay it over the final, uh, over different scan models, not the same, because I don't like the hand here of this model. So I have the hand, and for the hand I used another me method. I have a primitive cylinder which I get from here. So this cylinder, and I overlaid it over the finger and then I did the same method. I, uh, I, before I did that, I copied the cylinder and put it into, uh, so that it isn't overlaying here yet. And then uh, I did the same process by uh, saying, selecting the, the hand and the cylinder at the same time, pressing the key, and it, it, it will be over the cylinder. And here I have it ready. Mm. So I, I do this, place it over the cylinder. I have the axis already at the end, so that I can also scale it, for instance, from here so that it will fit and it doesn't fit if it doesn't fit right you're in trouble and then I'll say uh, read to apologize but that has already been done so I press this so that it will fit better but it will read that but that's no problem because you can uh, turn everything off and in point modes you can uh, uh, get this point uh, away from that finger. It will just snap to that finger. Probably I didn't have back face calling on. Oh, I did. So that is in a fast how you make a finger and you can go on with the entire hand and then um, project a hand onto it, you know, with uh, the sculpt tools. Um, oh with the sculpt uh, projection tools in, where am I, the sculpt mod model, model. You can use project mesh. Of course, you have to take everything out of here. Otherwise, it won't work. And then uh, I always, and that is also a handy feature of the HP modeling model, uh, you can uh, subdivide it so that it has more resolution and then you can project it onto the hands. This will not work because of that, but here is the hand and here's the finger and you can give up a subdivision and you can sculpt it. So you can detail it so that the detail will be projected immediately onto my finger so I don't have to use brushes to get pores and stuff because that's in the 3D scan. So I have a totally realistic finger. Um, let me see. After I've done that, I uh, have uh, models, other models I use uh, for this process that are already rigged and I'm a very bad rigger and I have to post them. So I buy from another scan, a scan site, scan lab, I buy rigged models and I, I project uh, with a reasonable UV. I later, I will change the UV uh, into my own UV, but it has already a UV, which is, so I like to paint on uh, 4K textures, that means that it has a high resolution uh, and it's very sculptable and paintable. And it's the, the, that's where you put your Photoshop and your paint files on it. Uh, so 
what I use is like rig models. Uh, I can show to you one of them. Uh, and the view mode. And where are my joints? Joints. You see, I use these kind of models uh, as a starting point, and they, these I project on the scanned meshes so that I have an exact person I want made up from different parts in high res, and I can start painting her. So for that, I use. Um, uh, this is Farouk unpainted, but I use ZBrush for the projection usually. Why? I can already have a base texture projected onto the mesh with the right co color. For Farouk, I use the Persian woman so that I have uh, the right colors already onto her. That makes it easier for me. And uh, I use another plugin for um, for um, for painting that makes it very easy to paint in but in body paint without having to go to Mari or ZBrush or Substance Painter. Sometimes. Uh, something I hope will be uh, done very soon in, um, in Cinema 4D. But there is a, a software called 4D Publish, which has a paint uh, module, and you can just paint with the sculpt uh, brushes and start right away, right? So I usually want to have my ZBrush textures in there, and you can do that as well. If I have all textures here, sorry, then it won't work. But uh, you have to be on the model. And then, because I work with different UV islands, uh, you can have, say, set up UDIMS. You have to uh, really keep for your, the names of your textures, like color, uh, and specular have to really be uh, in this naming convention, and then you have to end it with your UDIM number, your, your tile number. So the head is on tile one, which uh, is a thousand and one in UDIM terms, that just means the tile, and the body is on tile three with me, and uh, the arms are on tile two, etc. Etc. So that is very essential. And then I just have to load up the first tile. And sometimes if I have another texture open, this doesn't work, forgive me. Load them and set up. And then it does work this time. Everything will be set up for me in body paint. And uh, it's all very nice because I can paint on this uh, woman right away. There's even a layer already. And I can use several brushes. This is the paintbrush, which is really a sculpt brush also. And this is just a regular uh, body paint brush where you can do more sort of regular stencil painting, uh, which is very nice also when you want to paint uh, in both your displacement or normal channel and uh, bump channel uh, at the same time. So uh, here I have, um, it has its own content browser, but you have to be careful to, ha to not have too many um, pictures in your own content browser because uh, Cinema 4D already ships with uh, many uh, images, because other w and then your content view, that is a 4D published content view, will take a long time to start up, because it will load in your browser pictures as well. Here, into the, the, uh, the 4D published content browser, I loaded up 
the textures I'm going to use to paint up Farouk Amir Shahi and uh, the color textures, which this is Dosh Design Woman. I also use 3DK, uh, 3DSK textures, which are very beautiful uh, textures for clothing and heads and uh, everything. Bodies. And so, uh, how do I get this into my uh, browser here? Well, uh, in your preferences, 4D Publish has its own path. And here you can just uh, say where you have your directory of your uh, 4D Publish files. So, this is stamps, which I also use quite a lot. And here I have the Forug uh, files in my stencils. In, on my hard drive. So now I'm in the stencil already. When I control click on one of these, then I am in a stencil. And because I'm on a, sound, uh, 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 on a sculpt brush, I can even paint in uh, symmetry right now, which is not possible with uh, body paint process. So, if I have symmetry on, I don't. I could paint now through this mesh and move her around with the T key, which is the same uh, key for moving a stencil. I'm now pressing the T key to move her. I'm now scaling her with uh, the right mouse button, and I'm now rotating her with the middle mouse button. And then you position her and Always paint on the layers. Make sure you're on the right layer, because otherwise it won't work. Yeah? And then you can paint through her. First, you paint in symmetry. And when you're done, you turn off the symmetry, Alt X, and then you paint the other side. And well, I'm not positioning her, but this is a very, very nice and also a very time-intensive process. Uh, so this is the first section for painting. Mm. Next step will be um, making hair and posing her. Um, so, um, and making more for her. Uh, let me see. So, I now should see her somewhere. So, I dressed her as well. I gave her a, a leather jacket. And here you see that I just transferred a, 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 a rig to her. And I added eyes to the rig. And uh, make sure that everything is at zero posi position in your rig so that you can easily, when you model her, when you pose her, I'm now turning her arm. And in principle, I could uh, pose her now, but I'm not going to do that because first you make the hair. I make the hair differently for this model because I wanted to render her out in Corona Render. And at the time that I made her, Corona Render couldn't render uh, cinema for hair in a regular way yet. So I had to use uh, a workaround and give her um, and give her more guidelines. Hair basically is uh, illustrator uh, lines, and um, I locked her. Mm, let me see if I have another one. This is just the guides I have I, for her main hair. Uh, I, I make hair by adding guides. So first, I, uh, I do one hair at a time, because then I can brush her hair. 
uh, and in the direction that I want, I place her hair, and I always paint also the hair at first, because 3D artists forget to, uh, that uh, uh, CG hair doesn't look real. You always see that there is hair there, and when you render it out, it doesn't look real, but when you render it and have exactly the same color as the painted hairs, then you don't see that it's 3D hair later. So I first make place one hair with the uh, hair guide. Uh, one hair. When I start out, you just place one hair, non-interpolated, because then it comes up straight. And then after that, I, uh, when I placed more than one hair and I brushed it into the direction I want, I can place hairs in between, like I did 12, and say interpolate, and it will come as I brushed it. Uh, usually you don't have to do this, because when you render with a hair uh, material, the Cinema 4D does that itself, but I had to render uh, out, and this is very, very um, dangerous to do this, but the hairs, I put them as guides. So you have a lot of guides here, way too many. And then I render it out as, uh, um, in the generate, I render it out as squares or circles, and that then, if I click off, you can see there is real hair now. But immediately my viewport will start uh, slowing down. And um, this hair uh, doesn't, because it's real hair, I use the material for this, uh, and which gives it the color. And where are my materials? Uh, hair. So the hair material itself only has the thickness, uh, which for this hair, it's the wisp hair, so it's the hair here. It's very thin hair. This is the root, so you can make it even thinner. And this is the tip, which is super, super thin. And I use some of the features here, give it some kink and give it tighten it somewhat, some, some, so to give it a perfect hairdo. So, uh, and that Corona will render. Now Corona does render hair material. It has its, uh, so it's not a problem anymore. Um, the other thing you have to do for a realist, let me get rid of these um, um, joints. The other thing you have to do for a realistic ca a character is make um, expressions. Expressions, I don't make them on a rigged character, but I uh, have... Oh, let me uh, not turn on the hair, because that will be time-consuming. I think I should turn off that hair that is in uh yeah so in the in the uh, I made a lot of uh poses that you can also mix. And I also made a, a similar smile. Um, that I wanted for um, the final result. And um, 
that I did in a different file, but you have to really uh, have your um, Here you see how I uh, do that. Um, so here is um, Farouk uh, in point mode. And um, here is the tag, the wrong tag. I put them always on position, rotation, and points, so that I can also rotate the jaw, for instance, move it, and move the points. And then, to go into the tag in the animate, I already made a new uh, pose, but here you do the new pose, and you can start, you can use the sculpt brushes, you can use any brush you want, to make the new pose, and then record it. What you can also do is mix poses, like so, and say um, current state to object, which will uh, freeze that pose, and then you can make exactly the expression you want, from different poses again, which I did. That's how I made the smile. Uh, and here, I'm in the different woman. And what I did is copy it, but I also want to have the same base pose as the other mesh. So I added another pose morph again, because, and, but the base pose is now, this was the base pose, but I don't want that because otherwise I cannot copy it back into that uh, other mesh, which I want. So I want that base pose. So I copied that as well from the... Uh, I copied that as well from the original uh, morph mesh. I, and, re and after I copied this base pose, uh, and gave it a different name, uh, a different name, I said. So this was the original base pose now of this mesh. I replaced this base mesh with uh, the, the base mesh of that one, just by saying replace, replace. So, and then I could copy the final result back into the mesh. Never change your points or anything, because otherwise, don't go to ZBrush or start sculpting or changing your geometry, your topology, or it will not work. What I did afterwards is, again, in 4D Paint, the final result didn't look well because she was smiling, so there was all sorts of errors in my mesh. So I painted her up in 4D paint again, so that this all was matching and looked good. And I made her a little older as well. And then I was done. And I brought her to my render engine. And uh, that is over here. And this is her in a room. I placed her in between some, uh, just in a box, which you can see here. She's 
which is disappearing because this is a big file. And, uh, but here I paste her in a studio. And then I owned uh, a, a nice lighting uh, helper set by Joseph Bat Sahra, or I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry, Corona Studio Pools, uh, Tools. It has real life uh, Corona lights, and I used the Target Softbox. And I lighted her with the Target and the Softbox and a Corona Sky. Did I? Yes. And a Corona camera. And, uh, of course, the render settings are all Corona, but Corona doesn't really work well. Um, so it's a high-res file. I, I render out still, so it's 300 usually. And I do basically these settings of the camera with the real-life uh, settings of, ex of a real camera, like uh, the ISO and stuff. And um, the, the walls I left because that gives it reflection from the materials. And all Verhoeg's materials now are um, Corona materials. This is a beautiful skin material that Corona has. Here is her uh, color texture. You can give her some subsurface scattering, uh, which uh, gives her backlighting, which is really good for skin. Real life skin correction. So this is the reflection, which is, I just used her uh, maps. Her glossiness, I painted that. It's just a black and white ma uh, map to uh, the darker parts uh, will be not so glossy. The lighter parts will be the glossy parts of your face. And I gave her a normal map so that she has some detail. And no displacement, because that is not necessary because of my lighting. It, uh, it, 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 you didn't see it anyhow. So, and then you, I got this result. Now, uh, this is another uh, character I made. This is uh, Thomas Kirby. I made him exactly the same way as Verhoeg. And he's for a ghost story, a film, this, this role. So he's a zombie in this film, or partly. Cause so uh, let me go back to cinema and close all my files. So I'll, I'll um, can show you quickly maybe how I made uh, his pants, for instance. Um, if it works, um, where is he? So here are his pants, and uh, I, uh, this is a real scan texture of a worn jeans, and uh, it's already, again, in my uh, 4D publish, uh, I have these textures in the content browser. And um, so it's probably in my paintbrush. Let me see. Uh, where is it? Oh, here. This is a skull paintbrush. Of course, symmetry is not done. And then you can start painting. And then a the nice thing is that you can build this up because I took this from another site. Uh, 
I think it's a surface mimic. It doesn't exist anymore, but it also has displacement maps with your color textures. So I'm not doing that now, but you can paint uh, displacement and color at the same time. And that's really terrific. Bec and then in very high detail because all the textures are in part. So I have a part for his knee. I have a part for his left and his right neck. All the uh, uh, advanced stitches are in it already. So the, all I have to do is just move it around. T key is for the sculpt uh, stencils. And just go and, and have a field day, day painting it up. Um, but, and then I can uh, also even go to body paint. Body paint has uh, Photoshop masks. And I can, if I'm not happy, because I layer up like you do in Photoshop, layer, make many layers, many, as many as possible, because otherwise you will cry. Layer it up, and if you have stretching and stuff, because you're turning around, you can just uh, put your uh, brush on it, and with black, you brush it away. With white, you get it back. And then in the end, you can... Um, merge it all together, either in Photoshop or in uh, Cinema 4D, in the body paint uh, thing. And there's another nice nifty thing in uh, 4D Publish, which he made for us. And that is, you can also, a PBR uh, material is something new in Cinema 4D. It's a total photo real material, and you can paint in it. So this material I made, and in the reflection or reflectance channel, you can layer color layers, like here I just have this layer I have, the, the diffuse uh, that I already painted, and it also has alpha mask, as you can see. You can all paint that in... Um, that's just a regular mask, an alpha mask, so that you see his skin later through the uh, holes in his shirt, because zombies obviously have holes. And um, in the reflections layer, you can just make a new layer, which I did here, a new diffuse layer. And then you say, uh, create new texture. It um, will make a texture in the color. I usually use gray. And uh, then you can use the brushes of um, only the body paint brush of um, for the publish and not the paintbrush when you do this. This gives you a stencil in your image. If you have a stencil, which I obviously have, but you don't have to use a stencil, of course. You can also just, if you're not using a stencil, um, use the paintbrush and uh, brush a color uh, or whatever you want onto uh, your, uh, I hope I'm not using a stencil. I don't think so. Not clear, just to be safe. And now you can just brush the color. You need uh, the material editor, though. His material editor. Is that the material? Oh, no. I opened the content browser. Mistake. That takes a long time to load up. That's the mistake. Well, because you have to also ha see his layers in the material editor, but it's too much time now. Now we have to wait for this. I don't want you. Go away. I wanted the material view. You always have to refresh uh, and be on the blouse. And then you can... Uh, this is the new uh, layer, the color layer that I made. 
you can make layers now on this material because I'm painting directly inside of the, the, the layer system of the PBR material, so this doesn't work, but you can paint on the background layer. So, and you can also use a mask and everything, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. I'm now painting with white, for instance, on this thing. Okay. I uh, also rendered uh, Thomas Kirby in... Uh, I'm going to the standard view. Uh, in Corona Render, and uh, with the same uh, tools that I used for uh, for Ruch, only I uh, I used an, um, a setup by the this uh, thing I have in my content browser, the Corona Studio tools. So I didn't have to think. You have an entire studio set up, and I clicked on the master. What is the advantage of that? That it will give me a camera with the right settings, lighting settings, and it will give me a softbox, which I can still manipulate where I want my light to come from, uh, how big I want that softbox to be, you see? And before I start putting my textures on the characters, I can, with the Corona Interactive Renderer, I can test uh, what it looks like, if it looks okay to me, and if it's, this is a neutral light, because you cannot see what you're doing when you don't have a very neutral light and if there's backlighting, because I want to use subsurface scattering, which is the light which comes through your ears and your fingertops, and it, it doesn't work if you have, don't have some sort of backlight. And what is nice also, I don't have to think about render settings, because everything has been done for me in the Master Studio. I just have to tweak it a little, and I'm done. So basically, this setup is a real studio setting, which is really great for film stars, because they sometimes pose in real studios. And I can start putting on my materials and testing Thomas Kirby right away. Um, and um, I made, I rendered him out with an old, because when I made him, this was uh, last year, uh, Corona didn't have a sub subsurface skin material yet, so you had to know what you're doing. Ha fortunately, I know what I'm doing, which is I've been making uh, characters for a long time. So I made my own subsurface uh, material. It it's actually looks very good, and you have to use a volumetrics for that. And this is the scattering color now, and all sorts of um, translucency. Am I on the right? Yeah, you have to use this. You have to use all sorts of things. It has to be a little bit uh, transparent. And all of this to, fa to get real subsurface scattering, because what is in a skin material, what is set up for you, is really fake subsurface scattering. And it also looks really wonderful. And um, let me see. Where's Tom? I put the skin material already on him. Here you see, uh, I already put it on low res because otherwise this won't render. This time I used my own uh, ex uh, exposure settings, which you can do in your, uh, you don't have to use the camera. As you can see, I don't have that here. Uh, I have my uh, Corona Sky of myself 
with a sort of a reflection on it. And that is all. That is basically all I changed. And I have more backlighting in this setup. And um, I also did, uh, because I work in, a, I make stills, so I work in a photo editor. I don't use Photoshop because it's too expensive. Because, and, it's and Affinity Photo is just as good or any other photo editor. So I use that. So in Corona, you can also render out some um, a multipass. This, it's very important always when you want to have noise-free images to uh, render out your indirect and your direct light because they have a lot of noise and the rest is not so important. I always render out reflection as well because you can do wonderful things with that effect. And uh, then um, you can render it out in here, I hope. And while it's rendering, and it's very slow on this computer because it's just a laptop with not enough memory, then you can see your passes in here. So you can see already where is the most noise, and you can work on that in your image editor. And also, what is nice when you layer some effects, don't do too many, you can do more special effects with it later, so that your render will look really as if you made it in 3D, while actually you made it in your, uh, this is your reflect. I love to uh, render reflect always, because that gives you thousands of possibilities. A reflect doesn't show up. Oh, this is still my old one. Thing. So this is the subsurface scattering, really, you get. Is it the skin? Yeah, so this is the skin scattering, which is very important to render out that layer because it can be really a bit awful sometimes, and you can just mask out where you don't want it because it should be really on the, more on your ears and somewhat here where your skin is really thin. So basically that is it. And then... you get this result. Mm, no. You get this result, which is, of course, a totally manipulated file in Affinity Photo. Is, I put the vignette on. You can also put some depth of field. You don't have to render all that stuff because the modern photo editors will do that for you. And, uh, yeah, basically that is it. Do I still have time? I'm done, right? Yeah. Thank you.